Africa to Shamba Shepak. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need so they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shape Up. You may be surprised to see today that we are not in a Shamba. No, we are visiting a school, Moi Girls School, Nairobi. And it's not because I want to better my education, Carol. Oh, 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 Tony, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, you know, maybe a little. This is a good school. But we're here because of the Young Farmers Association. And we're here to help them learn more about agriculture. Because farming is the future. And these students know it. All right, so Tony, I'm going to head to class so that I can get to learn more about nutrition for girls. And I'm going to learn more about nutrition for cows. All right, see you later. See you later, Carol. Moy Girls School Nairobi is located in the middle of Nairobi County. Caro, did you know that to get in this school you must have scored over 400 marks in the KCPE exam? Wow, that explains all these trophies, Tony. Look at this! Other than excelling in academics, the school offers students many different activities, such as music, Pods. and the newly revived Young Farmers Club. And that's why we are here. Um, my name is Christina Anjiro Kahura. I'm a member of the Young Farmers Club. Um, I do love agriculture because it's the backbone of Kenya's economy and I enjoy doing agriculture as well. Moi Girls School are taking farming seriously. I mean, it's something that you do it from your heart, not just because people are saying that you do it. The students from the Young Farmers Club are involved in many parts of farming as a business. They keep cows, they grow kills, eggplants, tomatoes, and fish too. And they are learning to irrigate when there are no rains. But the girls also have plenty of challenges. With the schedule that this year we've been through, there's no time to deal with the livestock and the crops. I think that the main challenge. The vegetables do look a bit dry. And the cow's hygiene could be better. But first, I want to find out how they use their crops for meals. So, I'm off to find the home science class. Good morning, girls. Good morning. The girls study food and nutrition as part of their curriculum. So, what better place to find out about healthy eating? And we're in luck. Their teacher, Judith Ambenge, is here, together with a guest speaker, Dora Momanyi from Nutrition International. The topic today is the benefits of growing local crops. Now, if only I could find that classroom. What is the importance of food to the body? Can I get some answers? Yes. Maintains growth of the body. We want to grow up as young, energetic, beautiful girls, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, which other reason? Mm -hmm. It protects the body against diseases, microorganisms. Protecting our bodies against diseases, isn't it? Yes. We've invited our young lady here today. I want you to be very, very attentive as she takes us through food nutrients, majoring a bit on our indigenous foods. Yes. This looks like home science. Ah, yes, this is it. Oops, looks like I'm late. Oh, I see we have another guest. Sorry, I'm late. No, it's okay. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So, Madam Dora, yes. kindly continue. Thank you. Thank you. So, I'm really passionate about everyone having a chance to eat healthy food. So, one of the main problems that happens, we find that there is food produced in the farm, but we know there are people who sleep hungry, right? Yes. In one way, we can solve the problems that we go through here is we can implement kitchen gardens or school gardens. 
And what do we grow in, in kitchen gardens? Vegetables. We grow vegetables. So we have food groups, and all our food groups provide us with particular food nutrients, right? Now, this much I know already. There are seven main food groups. Group one, grains, roots, and tubers. Group two, legumes, nuts, and seeds. Group three, milk and dairy. Group four, meat and fish. Group five, eggs. Group six, vitamin A rich fruits and vegetables. Group seven, other fruits and vegetables. To grow strong and healthy, it's important to eat one food from at least four of these seven groups every day. Our guest speaker wants us to discuss the benefits of amaranth from group six, a local vegetable that the girls want to grow here. Amaranth is a traditional indigenous vegetable. Some call them ancient treasures because they have nutrients that we cannot afford not to have, especially as young girls who are growing up. The amaranth has carbohydrates, it has proteins, it has dietary fiber, a lot of it. It has some fat, it has some vitamins. Of course, we know all vegetables, right? And then of course, it has a high concentration of iron. As we grow, we go through different uh, stages. And uh, one of them is the menstrual cycle. And during menstruation, we lose a lot of blood. And how can we get back the blood? Which, which here, yes? By taking food rich in iron. By taking food rich in iron. iron. So that is why iron is very important. That means amaranth is very important for us girls who are growing up. I totally agree with that. As young girls, she will need lots of iron in our body. We have different ways how to cook the traditional vegetables so that we can retain as much of the iron that is lost from the traditional methods of cooking. Yes. Mwalimu, you've talked about the traditional way of uh, cooking the amaran. Mm -hmm. uh, the way you're saying, it seems maybe we have, we've been cooking it badly. Yes, so somebody tell us how they cook. Uh, yes. For example, at our home, we usually boil it, and I think that's not right since the nutrients are being exhausted. We lose the nutrients while boiling the amaranth. So next, we will divide ourselves into like four groups where we'll be doing our cooking demo. I'll come and teach you on ways of cooking our amaranth vegetable. Yeah, so some groups will be there, some here, and some there. Sure feels good to be back in school. Very interesting. Okay, now while Caro prepares for the cooking demonstration, I'm going to see how good nutrition can help with the cow's milk production. Hello ladies. Hi Tony. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. You are future experts on Shamba <laughs> Shape Up. Yes. It looks like that. Yeah. I've asked Samuel Ngumo from CKL Africa to help us. I'm sure the girls will enjoy some extra milk after all their hard work. Hi, Sammy. Sammy, how are you? Fine. Yes, yes. Sammy, yes. our students here are concerned about their milk production. Yeah. What would you advise? The first thing that we had to handle in these cows is their, their hygiene. Hygiene is part of management. And manage, management plays 80% role uh, to the well-being of a cow to production. 20% is genetics. Good management includes hygiene and nutrition. To increase milk production, we first have to improve the cow's hygiene. The first thing I noticed was, was that there's a small heap of dung in the cow shed. How does the accumulation of dung interfere with the well-being of the animals? So the presence of bacteria in, a cow, in the cow shed means that the probability for disease is higher. So we all know about mastitis and the other diseases. Mm -hmm. The cow dung on a daily basis should be cleaned out of the cow shed and put at a further place so that it's, it's able to dry and uh, so that can be used for the farm. What else have you observed? We need to do a cleaning of the water troughs because I noticed there is algae growing inside the, the water troughs. And the presence of algae in the water makes the taste of the water foul. So the cows find it not favorable for them to take. It means the milk production also will go low, will go down. Uh -huh. The other thing I noticed is that there are protruding nails and wires in the cow sheds. What is the effect of protruding nails in the cow shed? Injury, injury to the animals. Uh -huh. The next thing I observed is the sleeping area for the cows. 
One is damp and it's full of potholes. And um, what's the importance of maintaining hygiene in the sleeping area of the cows? The sleeping area of the cows is where the, the cow spends most of its time. Having a dirty sleeping area means the interaction between the cow and bacteria will be higher. There's a lot to be done, so let's get to work. First, we need to remove the cow dung. This should be done on a daily basis. The dung should be placed far from the cow shed. After breaking down, it can be used as manure for the crops. Next, the nails and all sharp objects should be removed. The floor needs to be leveled out. And then, sawdust placed in the sleeping areas. The drinking troughs should be clean. And the drains should be cleared so that the water runs away easily. For generally disinfecting, mix 50 milliliters of cooperside in 20 liters of water. Well, we're almost there. I wonder how Karo is getting on. Here in the home science class, the amaranth has been washed. Now, let's see how we can cook while keeping all the precious nutrients in the food. The secret is not to boil, but to fry. So we have our oil ready. Now we are going to add the onions. We won't cook the onions for too long. When our onions are almost ready, we will add tomatoes. We will start the tomatoes and cook the tomatoes for a few minutes. Frying helps maximize the nutrient content in the food. We are able to meet our daily requirements if we eat fried vegetables compared to boiling them. So we'll just fry them for like two to three minutes. We don't want to lose the green color. Well, I can't wait to taste this food. Now, I wonder how Tony is getting on over at the cow shed. Well, Caro, the cow shed is all cleaned up and it looks amazing. What else do we need to do to boost milk production? Uh, now that we are done with the hygiene part of management, now we go to nutrition. The first thing I want to talk about today is the fodder that you use for your animals. One, do not give the, the stemmy part of the fodder. I want us to be giving our animals the leafy part of the, of the fodder. What is the importance of fodder? So it provides roughage and most of the minerals actually are found in the fodder. When the animal is done eating, each day, they're supposed to remove the food from the, the trough. This will prevent water from accumulating at the bottom of the trough. Because what I noticed is that there is some moldy grass that remains at the bottom. This is very risky because of aflatoxin. It's also very risky because of the fall smell. So the animals have no urge to, to eat the fodder. So everything comes down to low milk production. The other important thing uh, and this should not be left out, is the giving of concentrates. Yes. What are concentrates? Concentrates are, are feed that have been already processed for better utilization by the animal. And compounded together, there's one product called dairy meal, which is very good for animals that give milk. Apart from the dairy meal that is available in the agrovets, we have a product called Copacula. Copacula is a protein supplement. It's very essential and very important for animals that are producing milk. It improves the quality of milk because of the protein. It improves the body condition of the animal. So how do we give them concentrate? The Copacula is given 200 grams per day mm -hmm. per animal. And this you increase in, with the increase of production. You only stop when the production stops. Okay. The other thing which is very important is mineral salts. Um, what's the importance of mineral salts? One, good production is what we are aiming at. You'll have your animal conceiving at the right time and coming on heat at the right time. So what mineral salts are we talking about here? Now, we have a mineral salt called Maclic Super. It has the, the elements essential for milk production. One of them is calcium and phosphorus. So each animal is recommended to, to get 200 grams per day. But if we are all able, the best way to do is to give it a libitum to put a trough aside for the animal to lick the salt at free will. It's also very important to put a salt block to assist the animal 
in supplementing of the salt. And if you do all that you've said, what are the expected results? Now, the expected results is that we will move from 27 liters of milk in the two cows that we are milking. Keeping with the hygiene and good nutrition, they will get there. In fact, a good breed of cow can give you over 20 liters if managed well and fed with quality feed and supplements. What I loved about them is the way they wanted to increase the milk production. And as the DH prefect, it made me happy because the tea will be increased. And talking of good quality feed, Caro, how is the amaranth? We are just about to start tasting now, Tony. Oh, and it looks wonderful. Okay, let's eat. The food is not only healthy and nutritious, it's delicious too. Iko vipi? Tamu sana. Very nice. Tamu sana. Wow! That was a success. But that's not all. Coming up right after the break, we're going to see how to grow amaranth using drip irrigation. Stay with us to find out more. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are visiting Moy Girls School. We found out all about healthy eating and healthy cows to increase milk production. But we also want to find out about irrigation while saving water. Carol? Yes? The next subject we are going to work together. Uh -uh. So how does it feel, you know, you working alongside me? How does it feel you working alongside me? Let's go find out. Back to class, Tony. Let's go. One of the challenges that we face is sometimes we may say that we are going to irrigate the farm but the farm keeper is not there. So we get challenges because um, the crops now don't get irrigated at um, the, right, the right time. Our final expert today is Stephen Wambua from Davies and Shatleaf. The school vegetable fields are doing well, but there isn't enough water. Stephen has come to advise the students on how to irrigate using the least amount of water. Let's see what he has to say. Stephen! Hi, Tony and Carol. Hi, how are you? Oh, quite well, thanks. The look, students uh, are doing a good job, aren't they? Excellent job. They look lovely. Carol, what do you think? Ah, uh, this one I can make ugali. Yeah. And just have it steamed, you know? And then add a bit of omena. You know, omena is indigenous. Really? Yes. <laughs> and you know, uh, I've been talking to our students, yes. and they're going indigenous. They want to plant amaran. Ah. Yes, you can imagine how amaran would look if spinach looks yeah. like this. It's going to look good. <laughs> yes. So, so what have you observed? Um, it's a very good team of uh, workers mm -hmm. and they are doing irrigation, which is very vital for uh, keeping a healthy crop. What is he yes, using? Yes, he's using a horse pipe. Horse pipes are generally waste food. He uses too much water and it compacts the soil. Mm -hmm. uh, besides, because of the too much water used on um, the soil, mm -hmm. it actually leaches nutrients from the uh, reach of the plant um, roots. Too much water again leads to water logging. Mm -hmm. And I've also observed one other thing. Mm -hmm. They are actually using sprinklers. Sprinklers generally have uh, finer droplets, so you don't compact the soil, okay. like the hose pipe mm -hmm. or the bucket. And um, it takes a bit longer to irrigate um, an area uh, sufficiently. And so you don't get problems of water logging and um, soil erosion. The disadvantage is, is water use. It still uses much more water, which is, uh, of course, a very scarce resource as we speak. Uh -huh. And it's also time consuming because you have to keep moving it, it from one point to another. It requires a lot of labor. So what do you recommend we use? <laughs> I have drip irrigation. What's that? Uh, drip irrigation is a system of uh, irrigation that uses a network of perforated tubes to apply water directly at the plant roots for amaranth. This is ideal spacing, okay. 20 centimeters. It can be closer or it can be slightly wider, but 20 centimeters is recommended for crops like amaranth mm. and other leafy vegetables. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so the drip irrigation is following the good agricultural practice? Exactly, because it is water spacing. It is water saving. It mm -hmm. is saving us water, which is very, very vital for the student population. Nice. So the main key of drip irrigation is saving water. water. Mm -hmm. Saving water. Now, this is a plot where you recommend 
to do the, the drip irrigation? This is a field where we want to do drip irrigation because the field is adequately prepared and our irrigation tank is right next to the plot. Why is it so important to have the tank just close to where you want to plant? We are um, avoiding possibilities of leakages along long pipelines and of course friction loss which leads to um, uh, drop in pressures. Mm. Mm. And, and your team is ready to install it? Our team is ready for the installation. Do you have guarantee? Warranties on every equipment that we supply. That is very support. important. And your team comes to check on the pipes? That's right. Regularly. regularly. They right. work with our students to make sure they are shipped up? That's right. Tony, let's go get our students so that they can come watch the team work. Yes. We'll meet you with your team. Later. Perfectly. See you later. All right. Thank you. Okay. Time we found our students and introduced them to drip irrigation. The day leaf drip kits come in various spacings from 10 centimeters all the way up to 200 centimeters, depending on the crop to be planted. And all the pipes and fittings are UV treated, meaning they don't get damaged by the sun. Items in the kit include tees, elbow connectors, couplings, start connectors, ball valves, and end plugs. Drip irrigation can be used in areas that don't have water, because less water is being wasted. It saves on time. With the time you would have used to water your plant, you could have used it to do something else, like studying. We've laid down the supply pipe. The screen filter is working. Steve. Hi, Tony. I'm I can Carol. see Hi. you and your team has been very, very busy. Very busy on the ground. Uh -huh. The only bit remaining is now laying the drip lines. Oh, wow. Do yes. you think we can help, Tony? Yes, we can. Girls? Do you need our help? Yes, yes, we need your help. We mm -hmm. need many hands here. Let's do this. Let's bring in the drip pipes. <laughs> <laughs> the day lift kit includes drip lines, emitters, elbow connections, valves, and everything you will need for the drip kit to work. Let's put in more drip line and end plugs. Looks like the girls are enjoying working in the shamba. Maybe some of them will follow a career in agriculture. I personally want to deal with agriculture economics and to just engage in farming activities. I love agriculture and I will want to feed people in the future. Five years from now, I think I'll be the principal minister for agriculture in Kenya. Hello and welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, only the coast, parts of the Rift Valley, Western Enyanza should expect rains. Marsabit to Isiolo, spanning across Kitui, Makueni and Taita Taveta, expect rains of less than 15 mm. The coastal region including Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa, Kwale and parts of neighboring counties such as Tana River and Garissa will get little to high rainfall ranging from 15 to 75 mm. Mount Kenya counties like Meru, Taraka and Embu expect reduced rains of below 25 mm. Other central Kenya counties such as Nyandarwa, Nyeri, Kerenyaga and Kiambu will see moderate rainfall of up to 50 mm. Nairobi and Machakos will receive little amount of rain of up to 25 mm. The Rift Valley from Trukana to Nakuru, Kiricho, Bomet and Narok will have moderate rainfall ranging from 15 to 50 mm. However, Trukana, Samburu, Laikipia and Kajiado will see little rain of up to 25 mm. Western Enyanza region counties such as Bungoma, Busia, Kakamega, Siaya, Kisumu, Homabe and Kisi will receive moderate rainfall ranging from 15 to 50 mm. If you have more fodder than your livestock can consume, don't let it go to waste. Harvest Napier while green and preserve it by making silage. If you have boma roots, harvest dry mature grass and make hay for long keeping. If you are having water shortage in your farm, irrigate your fruit trees or vegetables using a bottle. Get a plastic bottle, make holes on the lid, fill the bottle with water and replace the lid. Dig a hole next to the plant you want to water and insert the bottle upside down. Refill the bottle whenever it runs out. For more information and tips, get in touch with iShamba on 0711-082-606. I am Brenda, see you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. 
So, ladies. Yes. Ha have you enjoyed Shamba Shepa? Yes. Would you like us to visit again? Yes. Really? Yeah. The message I have for everybody is that whatever you have passion in it, go for it. And whoever you meet has a potential to build you professionally and personally. So Tony, our work here is done. done. And we'll see you in the next Shabbat. Shabbat.